Canada International Soccer. Uh, let's backtrack. Let's talk Olympics because that's the biggest, most recent piece of news in the world right now. Um, it might be oversimplifying for me to say it's not surprising news. It was perhaps surprising that Canada decided that they were going to do it first um, and they saw the opportunity to make a statement and be leaders. But in the grand scheme of things, perhaps add this into your reflection, but there's there's no way the Olympics start on time. Right? I think we're all in an agreement there. So for Canada to say they're not sending a team, it's not big news, but it's it's noteworthy. Laura, I guess first crack at you. I mean, I think it still is big news because I think somebody had to step up and say, we're not going collectively. You know, you've seen some of the U.S. Gov like the bodies, like the athletic bodies and stuff or the swimmers saying, we don't want to go. You needed a country to say, we're not going. And I think you also need more countries to step up and say, we're following Canada because the IOC is the IOC and they're going to drag their feet as long as possible. And if anybody was going to keep a sporting event going, it would be the IOC, like when they shouldn't be. Um, so I think that it was bold of Canada to do it. You kind of go, wow, every time something gets canceled, a league or an event or whatever, but you're like, oh, wait, in the grand scheme of things, this is not about yeah. sports anymore. You know, this is about people's health. And it's about all of the people that would that would be going into Japan, all of the people who would be watching those games, putting yourself in harm's way. It's not it's not worth it. It's not worth it for those athletes to train and then to be concerned that they're going to get sick. So, I mean, I think it was great by Canada. I was I'm impressed that they're taking the lead on this. Um, and I think it's, it's on the IOC now to be like, yeah, we're going to do it. Do I think that they're going to like have a response today saying we're postponing? No, because I think they're going to drag it out as long as they possibly can. I, I think don't it's think a great point. The health, the health has got to be number one. And I think that's why the, the athletes just wanted answers. Is it oversimplifying Kurt? Maybe you can comment on this. The IOC is going to wait as long as possible, just because the, the only thing they're concerned about for the most part, big picture business-wise is money, right? This is well, going to be a big financial loss. How do they recoup as much of that as possible? Yeah. Um, I'm not really one to pile on international committees because they are what they are. I think for for Canada, it was an easy decision because if your athletes aren't training, then you don't want to put them in a bad decision, right? Or a, a bad situation, right? So I, I imagine most of the athletes have, have had to suspend high level training. So of course, you're going to pull the plug on that. You don't want to send your athletes into a situation where they aren't even prepared. Uh, so easy decision for, for Canada. For the IOC, I imagine they're just trying to wait every single day they can i mean i think i think the end is probably approaching uh but you know are they trying to get to april and see if there's some kind of resolution to this which nobody's expecting there to be uh that, that's probably the situation they're probably just trying to wait to the very very last minute before they before they cancel and i can understand that to a certain extent but, but the pressure is the pressure is definitely on now i don't think that the conversation should be about canceling i think the conversation should be about postponing right yeah. so yeah, yeah. You're, not, you're not losing as much of the you're not losing as much of the financial stuff if you're postponing you're, you're there's going to be logistical changes of course but you know they've yeah. done that for euro they did that and euro is still a massive tournament too they did mm -hmm. that pretty damn quickly why aren't they doing that yeah for yeah I, I think canada yeah. probably done them a favor to be honest because now they can say well one yeah. nation's pulled out so a we have yeah. yeah and and there's probably going to be you know a chain reaction mm -hmm. uh, i think australia have maybe done it too or maybe making that up but anyway you'd expect i think australia said that they told their athletes to expect postponement expect right. 2021 so, but they haven't formally said we won't go right so you're going to expect more nations to follow suit and then that kind of makes their decision for them but there's no way that, that it can be this summer no no Okay, we're all in agreement there. So much we could get into. Uh, I'll, I'll open this to the floor. Should we talk a little more about what impact this will have on the women's team, if any, if it does go another year and players, or do we want to talk about the situation with the men's team with John Herdman and all that? What, uh, what are we feeling right now? You're the moderator. Okay, well then if it's my decision, I, I producer Kyle in my ear, I was just looking for backup. I, I do want to post a question to everyone because there's a lot of talk, especially after the Olympic qualifiers and what we saw, a bit of a lackluster three fixtures at Tournoi de France, but with how old Canada's veterans are getting, if this goes to 2021, will we see that same team if we have to wait one more year and is it more of a detriment that we might have to wait another year or does that give time for the Rebeards and the Haitamas to, to flourish a little bit and keep getting better? Yeah, I'm sure you're going to see at least close to the same team because they've used pretty much the same team for the last few years. Uh, I'm not really into that argument about, you know, one year makes a massive difference and Christine Sinclair a year older, just like I wasn't into it when, you know, everybody said Tom Brady was too old and he wouldn't want a Super Bowl at the age of whatever he was a few years ago, right? So I don't think the year is going to hurt them. If anything, it might 
help them a little bit. Um, I, I, I thought they were pretty tactically inflexible uh, at, at the women's uh, Olympic qualifiers, uh, especially in the game against the United States. Um, I don't I don't think a year hurts them in any way. Um, but, but we'll see if it gives time for maybe someone else to come into the team. I just doubt it, given the roster and the selection over the last few years. Yeah, they've got to, for me, they just go out, play the veteran players, right? Like the transition will happen when that happens. I don't think it really yeah. makes sense to kind of slot them in just because they are younger. Um, and that, that to me was kind of the, you know, the, the Brazil game was better at least in, in the second half. But the, the alarming thing about the tournament in France was that Diana Matheson came back and, and looked like one of Canada's best players almost straight away. And mm -hmm. so you're just wondering, you know, when they're still relying on kind of 35 year old players like that, you know, the young players just need to be better if, if they're going to displace those players. I do think that you've seen though, the players like Diana Matheson, Sophie Schmidt, um, Desiree Scott slow down recently. And I think that they will probably slow down a little bit more um, in the next year. I think that they're elite talents to be able to still be playing at this this time but as you said it's concerning that the young people are the young players are not kicking them out of the starting lineup and I don't think I think that the rate at which the veteran players will now slow down is going to be faster than the rate at which the younger players improve so yeah. that that is my concern that you're still playing the veteran players next year um, when they're probably maybe a step behind what they are right now. And, and I don't think Christine Sinclair is going to be a step behind what she is right now because I think, A, she's adapted her game fairly well to accommodate being a step behind what she used to be. But also she's an elite player, right? But the other players like the Sophie Schmitz, the, Diana, uh, the Desiree Scotts, who have to run a heck of a lot more and have to do a lot more work, like they should have younger players being – really competing for those spots and they don't and that's the problem that we've seen with Canada is that the transition is not happening very well it's not happening sort of seamlessly right. you're not seeing these young players come in and sort of make names for themselves and that's a problem so is that going to make their like Olympic chances more difficult next year yeah I think it is yeah and there's I mean I don't know the youth system that well but is there any evidence to suggest there's a lot of quality coming through at the youth level given what just happened at the U20 World Cup I don't know I think the U20 world, the U20 CONCACAF is what CONCACAF was, qualification. Yeah, yeah. It, it um, that was definitely concerning because you are seeing how top heavy it is. So I, I'm with you there. That that is a concern. There's only a couple players. I think Olivia Smith, I believe, is is like close. She was on the provisional squad, but that's not enough to to save your team.